Good evening, people. Um, today I will talk about um, how LARP was taken to the European Parliament, uh, how the politicians were made LARPers, and um, how to organize a LARP in an institution or other environment where the level of hierarchy and bureaucracy and security is high and uh, understanding of participatory art and tolerance towards people fooling around playing blood slaves to vampires is low. <laughs> The Parliament of Shadows uh, was a Vampire the Masquerade LARP organized by Johanna Pettersson, Bjarke Pedersen and myself last year. Uh, it was an official White Wolf game uh, played in the European Parliament as well as other places in, in Brussels. Um, players were about 20 of uh, well-marinated Nordic LARPers and then about 10 to 15 people, um, members of the parliament, parliament staff such as political advisors, assistants, translators, uh, as well as people from different political parties and cultural institutes, all of them in their first LARP ever. Uh, player characters were ghouls and mortal lobbyists working for vampires, inquisition or other uh, organizations trying to lob the European Parliament to have their way. Uh, in this talk I will concentrate on how the LARP was taken uh, to the heart of the European politics and how you can do the same. Uh, probably most of you know, all of you should know, uh, that the European Parliament is a directly elected parliamentary institution in the European Union where 751 MEPs, MEP stands for Member of the European Parliament, uh, work together with about 6,000 uh, political advisors, assistants and other stuff. What we basically do is we make legislation on the European level. Uh, when I started to work as a political advisor about two years ago, I had two personal goals. One was to be involved in uh, negotiating and writing a law which would have a direct impact on 500 million people. And the second one was to organize a LARP at the European Parliament. <laughs> As it turned out, um, the first was easier, uh, June 2017, but eventually Parliament of Shadows was played in November. Um, so on 24th of November, the actual elected real-life members of the European Parliament, Mia Petra Kumpula-Natri, a Finnish social democrat, and Julia Reda, uh, a German Pirate Party member, um, sat in a meeting room at the European Parliament in Brussels and listened to arguments from lobbying organizations such as the Eichel Group or the European Security Forum. Uh, Kumpula-Natri's assistants had prepared her for this meeting exactly the same way they would prepare her for an actual hearing. Uh, the subject of the day was a proposed piece of European Union legislation called ITIAS, the European Travel Information and Authorization System. It's a similar mechanism to the US ESTA, which you might be familiar of. So it requ uh, requires travelers to the European Union to register uh, in advance. And uh, while the MEPs and the assistants and the law were real, the lobbyists were not. They were lawpers. Um, MEPs were playing versions of themselves. Uh, for example, um, Julia Reda wanted to play a ghoul who has been put there as a member of the parliament so she could um, have the vampires will made there uh, in their European legislation. So it was from her, uh, it was her idea to play this, this ghoul who had just been put there. Um, so for as long as there have been vampires, they have wanted to have their say in the politics, right? So here we are with different lobbyist groups trying to figure out where Europe should go next. 
Uh, the design principle uh, was to use the real material as much as possible. So I digged into the European Union legislation made in the last, say, five years, and uh, found directives which we could use in the game. We gave the players the materials to help people to familiarize themselves with European Union decision-making process and the laws discussed. And uh, we also had a person from the parliament who is actually um, responsible for the ITIAS file uh, there to brief the participants before the game started. She also played an Inquisition agent who ended up being embraced as a vampire. So we have these different legislations. How can we use them in game? Say tax havens, what can we do with them? How can we play with them? Well, sure, vampires don't like to pay taxes to the mortal society. So when the European Parliament was to adopt a draft directive about tax transparency, the ghouls working for the, par for the vampires obviously worked hard to water it down as much as possible. Or let's take free trade with India. Uh, vampires don't want to hear anything about the workers' rights. To them, the idea that they should get less money just so a human could work shorter days or start working only when they're adults, that's ridiculous. So uh, the lobbyist ghouls would do their best to block all the amendments which had something to do with the equal pay or equal rights. Sadly, in the real life, they were also blocked, not by vampires, but the <coughs> right-wing parties. <sighs> so, what can be done in this kind of a LARP? Is it just meetings, discussions? Well, there were a lot of meetings and discussions, um, quite heated ones, but the uh, character, for example, received secret messages on the plenary hall balcony. They searched for hidden papers in the abandoned tunnels under the parliament building. Um, they hid under the table in a translator's booth in a parliament meeting hall to eavesdrop on a secret meeting. And uh, later on in the game, they, for example, partied in an absurd hotel suite. They met the Prince of Brussels. Um, they tried to take their destiny into their own hands while standing on top of that Arc the Tri Triumph, which was specially um, closed and made for us to play. They could have a cocktail party in a prestigious restaurant, looking over the main square, said to be the most beautiful square in Europe same place where the big lobbying companies actually organize their parties. Or they could try to sell, uh, find themselves a new protector at the exclusive Cavalier Officers Club. How to do it, you ask? It can be a slow process. For us, LARP pride, or as I like to call it, LARP hallelujah, was the key element. So I spent over a year at the parliament telling everyone that what we do is the coolest thing ever. And I cannot underline this enough, you have to be sure that what you're saying is true. You have to believe that this is the coolest thing and this is the most awesome thing. Because if you go there and say like, okay, uh, we, we, we do this <laughs> LARP thing, it might look funny, but it's all actually okay, nobody believe you. If you go there and say, this is the coolest thing in the 21st century, and then they're like, hmm, maybe I should get involved. And eventually they did believe me. Uh, next, you have to find the cool people inside the institution who actually believe this is the coolest thing. Good. Uh, you will need all the help you're gonna, you can get, really. And uh, you have to ask and you have to order people. Depends on your position and their positions. But um, with the MEPs, you would ask nicely. With the internees, you would also ask nicely and then um, give them this task of assisting us in our LARP. They liked it. 
uh, so no worries. Um, you have to be, be quite creative and flexible because the institution probably isn't. Uh, and you have to be patient. It took me a month to get one door opened. And this is not a metaphorical door, this is an actual door, which is usually shut and I needed to have it open. So uh, I think the winning argument might have been, if you never open it, why would you build a door and not a wall? Uh, bureaucracy will take time. Uh, for example, for this LARP, background che security checks were performed on all the participants uh, by the European Parliament security. Uh, which the security, by the way, did not um, know there was a LARP going on. This is the number, ask permission only if you must. Because if you can pull this thing off, if you go there to the security and say, we would like to hide some LARPers in the translator's booth to eavesdrop. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, luckily, in this particular institution, um, we could pull it off saying, OK, this is uh, officially a conference on participatory arts hosted by MEPs Kumpula Natri and Freda. And in our institution, that works. Um, I would like to underline the importance of runtime game mastering. I don't know if you can see. Um, there, this is my personal um, timetable for the very start of the LARP. All the NPC it had theirs, similar to that. And this is before it got complicated and also three-dimensional. Um, but this is also realistic, since the timetables are sometimes at the European Parliament, they are super, super tight. And we didn't want 360, which I adore, but we wanted something else. We wanted indexical. That means not only do they think, do things look like real, they are real, the laws are real, the MEPs are real, the restaurants don't pretend to be the ones where the lobbyists go, they are the ones where the lobbyists go, um, the exclusive clubs are, are ex exactly what they claim to be and just as exclusive and it will take forever for you to get there, but you will eventually. And also you will need a brilliant team, one who knows both the institution from inside out and the world you're using, in our case, the world of darkness. And who can combine these two things into a meaningful, well-designed LARP. If you're not a local, uh, you'll need locals. And you will need people who are able to do the runtime game mastering, and of course, you need the documentation. Now, um, now that we have had LARPs in the national parliaments, and we had LARPs in the European Parliament, I would say that there is no place where we could not take LARP into. So I am waiting for NATO, <laughs> US Senate, the UN, and when you're gonna run those, please let me know. Thank you.